Listen to this part again real quick. I just want you to hear this, and then I want to point out something that no one else has pointed out that I've seen so far that I think it, it really puts the nail in the coffin of any excuse. Revelation 5 here. Check this out. Stay with me. This is extremely important to see what Kirk Franklin said in context. You see the pentagram back here, the goat head, and then check out the children here in awe of him here to worship the goat. Howdy y'all, I'm Brylan. Now, if you live on planet Earth, <laughs> you've probably heard the recent story of when Kirk Franklin went on BET to do a rap challenge or something. And it, during his rap, he said something that was extremely concerning, very disturbing, and a lot of Christians took issue with it. And, you know, I I know that this is kind of an old story now because it was like, a couple days ago, but I decided I want to give my thoughts on it because watching some other videos on this, there are certain aspects that I felt people left out of their responses. And I want to give my point of view, what I think about this from a biblical perspective. And I want to show you some scripture to back up some of my thoughts on how I feel about the language that Kirk Franklin used in his rap on BET in front of the whole world. Now, here's the actual rap. Let's listen to it, and then I want to show you some scripture, give you my thoughts, and talk about, is this really just an innocent kind of slip-up, if you will, or is there something more to this? Hey, if you want to support this channel and represent biblical truth, this is one of our shirts right here. I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. You can find our merch linked in the description below. We would really appreciate your support. Hey, would you consider hitting that subscribe button and being a part of this community with us? I would love to hear from you on a regular basis. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up button as well. You know, when you like this video, YouTube pushes it out to more people and it would really help spread this message. Like Big and Jay and Nas, the greatest the the lion and the lamb will bow down to the Okay, right there. The lion and the lamb will bow down to the goat. Now, you have to realize that he didn't cuss in this rap at all. So, obviously, it's Christian, right? So, one of the biggest issues I have is Kirk Franklin's response to him rapping about this. But listen to this part again real quick. I just want you to hear this. And then I want to point out something that no one else has pointed out that I've seen so far that I think... It really puts the nail in the coffin of any excuse towards trying to just make this sound like it was just an analogy. It wasn't theology. It was just an analogy. This is Kirk Franklin's response right here. He says, in hip hop, who is the greatest or the greatest of all time goat? has always been a discussion. Metaphorically, I position those considered great as lions and lambs and how they will someday bow down to Jesus, who is the greatest of all time. It's hyperbole, not theology. So, first of all, you're, you're the greatest. You're supposed to be one of the most respected and greatest gospel artists of all time. Everything that you put out should have to do with theology. It should put theology first. You should make sure that it is, it is theologically sound. So this is not an excuse where he says it's hyperbole and not theology. But look what he says. Lions and lambs. He says he positioned those considered to be great as lions and lambs with S's on them. Do you see this? He did not say that in his rap. He did not say lions and lambs. All you have to do is read the Bible and you'll see that lion and lamb refers to Jesus Christ. Christ, and I'm going to show you some scripture to show you that in just one second. But he says, Lion and Lamb. Listen. The lion and the lamb will bow down to the okay, so the lion and the lamb. He didn't say the lions and the lambs. So, you know, again, it, there's not much you can say here that makes for a decent excuse for why you said what you said. Also, nowhere in scripture are is is Jesus considered a goat? 
Now, I know what this means. It's the greatest of all time. This is used in sports as well. A lot of people talk about is Tom Brady the greatest of all time? Is Tom Brady the GOAT of quarterbacks in football? I understand what this is trying to say, but biblically and theologically, there are things that are off limits. And this is one of those things. This this is absolutely something that Kirk should have never said. And instead of just owning it, and saying, wait a minute, hold on. That does sound kind of sketchy now that I'm hearing it and hearing feedback from you guys. I probably shouldn't have said that. I probably shouldn't have done that. What really, I mean, it'd be nice if he said, I shouldn't have gone on BET at all. Instead of trying to dismiss what he said as just, you know, it's not about theology, it's just hyperbole and make everybody else out to be the ones that are wrong. And how dare you get upset that I compared a goat to Jesus. Revelation 5 here. Check this out. Stay with me. This is extremely important to see what Kirk Franklin said in context. The scroll of the Lamb. Revelation 5, starting in verse 5. And one of the elders said to me, Weep no more. Behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, Jesus, the Root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. Verse 6, And between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders, I saw a lamb standing, Jesus, as though it had been slain with seven horns and with seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Verse 8, And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb the 24 elders bowing down to the lamb you never read about the lamb jesus the lamb of god bowing down before anything go down here to verse 12 worthy is the lamb who was slain go down here to verse 13 to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and mighty forever and ever Jesus Christ is the Lion of Judah. He is the Lamb of God. He is the Lamb that was slain. The Lion and the Lamb is Jesus Christ. And again, he said Lion and Lamb in his rap. If he was really trying to play it off and talk about multiple people that are considered great, he would have added an S. I still don't think it would have made it right. It still would have been very, very bad because the imagery you're rapping about is demonic, whether you like it or not. And then here in Matthew 25, if you go down to verse 31, check out what it says in the final judgment. Now, this is how, listen to the way goats are described in scripture. Verse 31, when the son of man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. So the sheep and the goats will be separated and check out what it says will happen to each one. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And then check out what it says about the goats down here. Verse 41, Then he will say to those on his left, which are the goats, remember, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Now, Daniel 8 also has a vision that is described of the ram and the goat. Check this out. You can read the whole chapter. It's fascinating Uh, prophecy. As I was considering, behold, a male goat came from the west across the face of the whole earth without touching the ground. And the goat had a conspicuous horn between his eyes. This is a prophecy about Alexander the Great coming in destruction and causing wreaking havoc and destruction on the people of God. So again, goats are not looked at as fond imagery in Scripture. Nowhere in Scripture will you see Jesus being compared as a goat or to a goat or used as imagery as a goat. The only thing you're going to see about goats in Scripture is them being separated from the sheep 
and thrown into eternal judgment, fire, hell. And Alexander the Great being described as a goat uh, coming to bring destruction. And you'll see many other places where goat is used, but it is never used to describe Jesus. It is predominantly used in a negative, destructive way. Now, here's a statue of Baphomet. You see the pentagram back here, the goat head, the wings, the goat legs. Do you see these goat legs down here? And then check out the children here in awe of him, here to worship the goat, Satan, really. And this is disgust. This is absolutely disgusting. This is used by satanism the satanic temple this is used by satanists as their statue to worship as their idol and kirk franklin is defending his use of a metaphor though i know the metaphor is called goat and i'm not saying that every time this greatest of all time is used it's bad but there is a line you cross when you compare a goat to jesus christ i don't care what type of societal excuses or cultural excuses you have for it 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 should have never been said that way just own up to it come out and say it was stupid of me to say it like that and i'm gonna brush up on my theology especially if you're going to be the number one gospel artist in the world and you know, even if this was just a mess up on Kirk Franklin's part, he didn't mean to, it was an accidental, you know, he really did just mean it exactly as he says here. It still shows that he's obviously not theologically fit to be considered one of the biggest and most respected gospel artists of all time. I mean, this is, the influence here is astronomical. And if you're going to be this sloppy in your theology, then you don't need to be the world's number one gospel artist. So yeah, I don't like that Kirk Franklin did this or said this. Um, you know, I, I think that he needs to brush up on his theology and get, a, a, you know, maybe a little better acquainted with the word of God. Let me know your thoughts about all this in the comment section below. I would love to hear your thoughts. And please hit that subscribe button as well. Be a part of this community. I would love to hear from you on a regular basis. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that thumbs up button, you know, when you like this video, YouTube pushes it out to more people and it would really help spread this message. And hey, come meet me over on Patreon. I'd love to meet you over there. You can find our Patreon linked in the description below. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.